So first of all, you need to go to search in your Windows or in your Mac, and you need to write NVIDIA in your search panel. Once you write the query in your search panel, you will have two options, NVIDIA GeForce Experience and NVIDIA Control Panel. In order to see these applications on your computer, you need to download and install the NVIDIA GeForce Experience. Once you're done, you need to dive straight into the GeForce Experience. Once you're right inside the NVIDIA GeForce Experience, you need to navigate to drivers. Once you're right inside the drivers, you need to find these three vertical dots. Once you do so, you need to click on this and make sure you have two options here. Our concern is with the Studio Driver because it provides the best experience for the creative apps, which includes Adobe Photoshop, Illustrator, all these applications, and including the Blender 2. You need to select the Studio Driver and make sure you have the latest version of the NVIDIA Studio Driver installed on your PC. You need to go to search again and you need to type NVIDIA here in the search panel. Now at this time, you need to dive into the NVIDIA control panel. Once you're right inside the NVIDIA control panel, first of all, you need to go to configure surround by X and you need to make sure you select the processor of this Phys X as your GPU processor. Do not select the CPU here because it will slow down your computer and Blender will not be able to use the GPU acceleration for rendering. Once you do so, you need to go to adjust image settings with preview and you need to select use the advanced 3D image settings. And the most important setting is the manage 3D settings. This is the GPU acceleration setting with that we are going to apply to the Blender so that the Blender can use the GPU acceleration while rendering. So in order to apply the best settings, you need to go to the program settings and you need to select the Blender in the drop-down menu of the applications. Right now, it says that select the program to customize. You need to click on Add. Once you click on Add, it will give you a pop-up here. You need to click on Browse, and this is the default location of the Blender. You need to go to C, Program Files, Blender Foundation, Blender 3.4. This is the version of the Blender. And once you are right inside, you need to double click on this application and you need to click on Open. If you want to see the default location of the Blender, you need to go to C. Let me show you quickly. You need to navigate to your local disk C where your Windows is installed. You need to go to Program Files. You need to find the Blender Foundation. This is the Blender Foundation and this is the Blender 3.4 version and you need to select the XE file application file and you need to click on Open. Once you do so, the Blender.exe file will be imported that we can customize to use the GPU for rendering. So first of all is the image scaling. If you want to scale your image and make it sharper, you need to click on this turn on and you can enter the level of the scaling and sharpening of the images. I would recommend you to go with the 50% because if you make it up to the 100%, you will get a too much noise in your photos or in your images while in Blender. But I recommend to go with 50% so that it does not make our images too much noisy, and you need to click on OK. In the anastropic filtering, you need to make sure it is 8 by. If you go with 16x, it will use your GPU too much and it will slow down your computer. But if you have a very high-end PC, you can go with 16x. Also, it will add too much noise in your photos or the graphics, so I recommend to go with 8x. But if you have a very high-end PC, you can go with 16x. For FXAA, you need to make sure it is on. For the gamma correction, you need to make this on. For the anti-aliasing mode, make sure over at any application setting is enabled. It will boost your GPU while you are editing in Blender. For the anti-aliasing settings, go with 8x. For the anti-aliasing transparency, you can go with 8x, super simple. For the background application, max frame rate, it should be on, and you can make it as high as possible and click on OK. For the CUDA GPU, this is a very important setting. You need to make sure you select your GPU. Right now, in this case, I have NVIDIA GeForce 1660 Ti, so I will select this and click on OK, so that it can use the GPU while editing or rendering in the Blender. For the low latency mode, make sure it is on, if you want to go for the very smooth experience of graphics and animations, you can go with Ultra, but it will cause shuttering in your frames. Again, if you have a very high-end PC, you can go with Ultra so that your resources can be used to provide you the best smooth animations in Blender. I would recommend to go with On for now. For the max frame rate, you need to click on On and keep it at maximum. 
If your blender is crashing a lot, you can reduce it and you can check it on your own. I have applied all these settings and I have checked it and it works very well. For the monitor technology, you need to make sure G-Sync is compatible. Or if you have a FreeSync, that's fine too. For the multi-frame sampled MFAA, you need to make sure it is on. Now the OpenGL GDA compatibility and the OpenGL rendering GPU, these two settings are very important. In the first settings, you need to apply the Braffer performance. And in the next setting, OpenGL GPU rendering, you need to select your graphics card. In the power management mode, make sure to prefer the maximum performance so that it can utilize your resources to provide the best experience. For the refresh rate, you can go with the highest available. For the texture filtering, make sure it is on. For the negative LOD bias, make sure it is used as clamp. And for the texture filtering quality, if you want the best quality, you can go with the quality. If you want to be the best performance like smooth animations of graphics, you can go with high performance. I prefer to go with high performance. For the trilinear optimization, make sure it is on. For threaded optimization, it is very useful so that multiple CPU technology can be used. You need to make sure it is also turned on. For the triple buffering, make it as on. It will boost your OpenGL applications like Blender. And for the vertical sync, use the 3D application settings. Make sure it is selected. And if you are working in the virtual reality, you can apply the user 3D application settings. If not, use the global settings. That's fine. And for the Vulkan OpenGL present mode, you need to make sure to select the preferred layer on DXGI swap chain. That's a very important setting. And once you're done with your GPU settings for the Blender, do not forget to hit Apply button because it will save all your settings. Once you do so, it will optimize the GPU for the Blender. And now you can experience the best performance from the Blender. And that's it. I hope you like this video. If you have any questions, you can comment down below and also comment down below. How was your experience with the Blender after applying all these settings? And that's it. I hope you like this video and thank you so much for watching this video.